Welcome back to P2. Today we are looking at circles and triangles within our XY plane. Now for this you need to think at least one thing from your IGCSEs, okay, which I'll put up now, and it's about when you have a triangle where one of the lines essentially goes through the diameter. So if I have a circle and I draw a diameter through it, then this circle, if I turn it into a triangle, at any point, the angle that touches the circumference is 90 degrees. So it doesn't matter where I am. So this would make a 90 degree angle, but equally, if I move that triangle and say hit here, as long as I'm joining it back up and as long as it, that one side is the diameter, the angle on the circumference, on the edge of the circle, is always going to be 90 degrees. And that fact is an important fact for the next set of questions that we're going to be looking at. Now, going with that fact is another one that, when I start to do it, hopefully will seem quite obvious. If I have a chord and we take the perpendicular bisector of that chord, which would be something like this, now, I know that that perpendicular bisector goes through the center of the circle. If I take a, another chord, doesn't matter where I draw it, and then I take the perpendicular bisector of this chord, where these meet should be the center of the circle. Now, obviously mine doesn't look quite in the center there, and that's because I'm not actually taking a perfect perpendicular bisector but if you test it out you can see that this is true because we know that the perpendicular bisector of any chord goes through the center of the circle so it makes sense that if you do this with two different chords where they meet must be the very center of that circle and this is a, another fact that's going to help us now as we start looking at circles and triangles within our xy plane Okay, so first example. The points A, B and C lie in a circle. Show that triangle A, B, C is a right angle triangle. So a right angle is obviously 90 degrees, which means that two of the lines have to be perpendicular to each other. So what we want to do for this first bit is start off by thinking about the gradients of each line. So we can do the gradient of A, B. Then we can find the gradient of AC and the gradient of BC. And then we found all three lines and their gradients. So AB is going to be difference in Ys, 7 minus 8 over 7 minus minus 2. That's going to be minus 1 over 9, so minus 1 ninth. Then let's look at the gradient of AC. And that is minus 1 minus 8 over minus 3 minus minus 2. So that gives me minus 9 on the top. Minus 3 plus 2 is minus 1. So that gives me positive 9. So actually there I can see now these two are, are at 90 degrees to each other. In this case, I don't need the gradient of the third line, so I won't bother working it out. But, you know, if I did need to go to the third one again, obviously I'd just do the third one in the same way. So these two now are clearly perpendicular. So, you know, we can kind of think of gradient one times gradient two should equal that minus one, which is what we've got. And, you know, you just need some sort of explanation. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just want to show that 
they are perpendicular, multiply them together, should give you negative one, you know? And you can put that here, so if you want, if perpendicular, this happens, anything like that. So this is how I did part A with, you know, thinking about perpendicular lines and the gradients. An alternative way is to use Pythagoras. If you remember with Pythagoras, you know, we have the very straightforward equation of c squared equals, actually, put up here, c squared equals a squared plus b squared. If this is true, then it's a right angled triangle. So I can look at it that way as well. So I can find the distances of AB, AC, and BC, and obviously square them and check how they fit into here. Okay, so, you know, BC would be, we already know it's the diameter, it's going to be the longest side. So we should essentially end up with this scenario. Okay, so I can find the distances and I can do it that way. And that actually might be a slightly quicker way of getting or proving that it is a right angle. And we can easily see where the diameter is because the diameter is the longest side. And it's always going to be opposite your right angle. Now, all three points lie in the circle. We have a right angle in it, which means that one of the sides has to be a diameter. And that side is going to be the one that obviously doesn't have that 90 degrees. So A, B to A, C has the 90 degrees. Therefore, BC must be the diameter. So when I'm looking now at part B, I can say that BC is the diameter. Therefore, the center of the circle is gonna be the midpoint of BC, isn't it? And the midpoint of BC, we would add our X values and divide by two, add our Y values, and divide by 2. Nice and straightforward. So 7 plus negative 3 is 4. So this is going to give me 2. 7 minus 1 is 6. Um, therefore, this would be 3. So the midpoint of my circle is 2, 3. And for part C, we need to write down the equation of the circle. So for that, now we have the center. All we're left to find is the radius. And the radius would be that midpoint then going towards either B or C. I can find that distance. Or I could find the distance B, C and divide it by 2. Okay. Either way is makes no difference. If you did the B, C and then divided by 2, might be slightly safer if you made a mistake with the midpoint. But, you know, in the long, big scheme of things, it doesn't, shouldn't really matter I think finding from the centre would be a little bit quicker. So our radius is going to be square root of, and I'm going to go from B to the centre. So 7 minus 2 squared plus 7 minus 3 squared. And like I said, I could go from C as well, and I should get the same answer. So 7 minus 2 is 5 squared is 25, 7 minus 3 is 4, and 4 squared is 16. And that leaves me the radius of the square root of 41. Obviously, we actually want r squared anyway, so it doesn't really, you know, I could have actually ignored the square root going through this and just found r squared. So, circle is x minus 2 squared plus y minus 3 squared equals 41. And there we are complete. Now, I think what I'm going to do is just the one example today. I'm going to put a few questions up and as always, I will go through the answers at the end of the video.
So have a little look there if you want some additional examples or help. Now, to show that AC is the diameter of the circle, we first need to find all of our lengths. So we need to find the length of AB, AC, and BC. And rather than just find the lengths, we're going to find them squared because then we'll be able to use Pythagoras. It also means that we don't have to deal with square roots when finding the distances. Now, we can clearly see that 32 plus 32 equals 64. So AB squared plus BC squared must equal AC squared. Therefore, triangle ABC is a right angle triangle and a, C is the diameter. Now, for part B, we need to find the equation of the circle, which means we need to find the centre of the circle, so we're looking for the midpoint of A, C, because the middle of the diameter is obviously going to be the centre. So, midpoint is 4 plus 4 over 2, and 5 plus the negative 3 over 2. So 4 plus 4 is 8, over 2 is 4. 5 plus a negative 3 is 2, over 2 is 1. So the centre of my circle is 4, 1. Next I need to find the radius, and the, hence the radius squared. So let's start off with the diameter. So the diameter is going to be a c so that's going to be the square root of 64 which is going to be 8 therefore the radius must be 4 so my center of the circle is x minus 4 squared plus y minus 1 squared equals r squared which is 16 now, for part C, we want to find the area of the triangle. Remember that we have basically got a right angle triangle, haven't we? We know that. We know that the diameter is AC, so I could just pop the B in there. And we know that these distances, AB and BC, are going to be the square root of 32. And we know this one's 8 but we don't need that one. So the area of ABC is just going to be half base times height. So half times root 32 times root 32. Or base times height divided by 2, however you prefer to do it. So root 32 times root 32 is just 32 times a half is 16. And what we like to do is just put units squared on the end there show us an area and as we don't have any other measurements just a unit now for a to find the perpendicular bisector i need to find the gradient of a b so that then i can find the gradient of the perpendicular and i'm also going to need the midpoint of a b because the perpendicular bisector will go through the middle of AB. So the gradient of AB, so I'm just going to do B take away A. So we got 6 minus minus 2, minus 2, minus, minus 6. So 6 plus 2 is 8, minus 2 plus 6 is 4. So the gradient of AB is 2. Therefore, the gradient of the perpendicular is minus a half. The midpoint of AB is simply adding up my x values. So minus 6 plus minus 2 over 2. 
and then the y value is minus 2 plus 6 over 2. So minus 6 plus a negative 2 is minus 8, over 2 is minus 4. And minus 2 plus 6 is 4 over 2, which is 2. So now we've got the gradient and the centre. So I've got my gradient is minus a half and my centre is minus 4, 2. I can use y minus y1 equals m, x minus x1 to find the equation of the straight line. Now, finding the perpendicular by the sector of BC is pretty much the same, or exactly the same. So centre of a circle is going to be where my two perpendicular bisectors meet. So I've used the y equals versions, the y equals mx plus c versions, as it's a nice and easy. So I'm equating these, so you have minus a half x equals x plus 3. Next, what I like to do is when i got a fraction, I, am, I like to try and make this whole number. So I'm going to multiply through by 2. You know, just multiplying through by the denominator there just makes it a little bit nicer to deal with. So we get 3x on the right, negative 6 on the left, dividing by 3, so I get x is negative 2. And I'm going to substitute this into the second equation. I can substitute it into any one, makes no difference. So minus 2 plus 3 is 1. So the center of my circle is minus 2, 1. Now, to be able to get the equation of the circle, I'm also going to need the radius. And the radius is just going to be the distance from the center to any point around the circumference. So I'm going to do that to C, just because it's got two positive values within the coordinates. So I just think it's a little bit easier. And rather than just find the radius, I'm going to find the radius squared, as that's what we need, and then we don't have to deal with any square roots. So difference in my x values, so we start with a c, so 3 minus minus 2 squared plus 1 minus 1 squared. So we have 5 squared, which is 25, plus obviously 0, so my r squared is 25. So I know my radius is 5, but I don't need that. So my equation is x minus minus 2 squared plus y minus 1 squared equals 25, which is quite clearly x plus 2 squared plus y minus 1 squared equals 25. So part A, nice and easy. The centre and the radius will come from changing or rearranging my equation here into the proper form of an equation of a circle. So into its x minus a squared plus x uh, y minus b squared equals r squared. So to do that, it's just a bit of completing the square and rearranging.
Now for B we need to show that the points A and B are the diameter. So let's look at the distance AB. That's going to give me, thinking of the difference in my x's, so minus 13 minus 11 squared plus 17 minus 7 squared. That gives us 24 squared plus 10 squared, which is the square root of 6, 7, 6, which is 26. Now, from my equation of circle, I know that r squared equals 169, therefore the radius must be 13. Now, I can clearly see that the length ab is twice the radius, therefore it has to be the diameter. So here's a rough sketch of what I'm looking at. Now, AB is a diameter. We've shown that in part B. If it's a diameter, then, and the right angle is ACB, means that C, while being a right angle, is also on that circle. It's on the circumference of the circle as well. Because remember, an angle, or point that touches the edge of the circle where you've got a diameter that's at 90 degrees. So it's got to be on the circle. Now, we know that it's on the negative x-axis, okay? So that also means that y must be equal to zero. So let's take my equation of the circle, which I'm just gonna use the original version. Let's substitute y equals zero into it. So that means we get x squared plus two x minus 24 equals zero. And then I wanna factorize this. So factorizing this is gonna give me x and x. Now to get to the negative 24 is gonna be a four times six, and we're gonna need a positive six and a negative four. Therefore, x equals minus 6, or x equals 4. Now, it clearly says it's on the negative x-axis, so we know that the negative 6 is the one we want. So we know that c is minus 6, 0. And there we are with the final question complete.